welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to work on something that has been very neglected lately and that is my lawn work. So I'm borrowing my mom's um, little electric weed eater um, because do you guys remember when I broke the I ran out of string in my weed eater. Um, funny story. So I literally went, probably it was like the next day, and bought more string. I even watched a YouTube video on how to do it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so, so easy. That was, gosh, a long time ago, months ago. And take a guess if I changed my string yet. <laughs> That's a no. It's still sitting in my garage at home. So, nevertheless, this was just really easy to borrow. My parents live right down the road, which is awesome. Um, and my goodness, this thing is really light. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see how it works. Okay, so the lawn has not been mowed for quite a while, and it's pretty long, but goodness knows I'm not going to tackle that. It's almost winter. It'll be fine. But on the other hand, I was thinking about like all of these weeds and stuff and all in the ditch and everything it's all just loaded with weeds because it really hasn't been weed eaten forever and i was thinking about how that stuff when it snows it's gonna stick up through the snow and look really hideous and i mean obviously the house doesn't look that beautiful right now let's be honest but when the snow comes snow has the potential to make even the dumpiest places look nice when it's covered with snow but if there's those nasty weeds sticking up, then it's not going to be pretty. And I want it at least to be somewhat pretty, you know, during the winter. So anyway, I was thinking it would be nice and start off the year, the next year, with the weeds down and everything. It'll just be good all around. So I wanted to do that because it's such a gloriously beautiful day today. My goodness, it's the end of October and it's like... I'm even a little hot in this. It's like 70 degrees. It's amazing. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to try out my new product that EcoFlow sent me, and that is the River 2. So you probably recall about a month ago, I showed you guys the Delta 2 from EcoFlow, and I used that to power my chop saw when I was closing up the door that kind of went between the new living room and the new laundry room. So that worked amazing and my goodness, since then I have used that, like no joke, I use it all the time. I use it for my sawzall, my chop saw, my just charging my phone, charging my drill batteries, whatever. Um, I know Seth uses it a lot. It's really helpful because you can take it anywhere, it's so portable. Um, so it's definitely been just amazing here at the house, especially because we only have the one outlet that's working and that is down in the basement. So it saves from tripping over cords and it's just been great. Um, so I'm really excited. I just got this in the mail actually today. So I'm very excited to use it and to have another unit like this here at the house. So this is the River 2. Um, and I believe it's actually coming out today, coming out available today. I guess EcoFlow just keeps um, improving and improving on their products that they already have. So this is the new and improved River. So since the weed eater that I borrowed from my mom is electric, I thought that this would be a perfect opportunity to try out my new river too, instead of having to have a cord running all the way from the house, which would be a pain. So the river two is a smaller and more portable power station. It is only 7.7 .7 pounds, so it's super easy to carry around for all of my odd jobs like weed eating. When plugged into an outlet, it will literally charge from zero to 100% in just one hour. And with the solar panels, it can fully charge in three hours. You can also charge it in your car, which is great for camping or for power outages on a very cloudy day. I have been just so impressed at the amount that these batteries can power on a single charge. The River 2 has two regular outlets, two USB outlets, and one USB-C outlet. Its screen shows how much power is left in it and how much time it will continue to charge whatever you're using at its current rate. I can use my handy dandy EcoFlow app to check on both of my power stations. I can see their charging levels and even turn them on or off via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So again, it's a super, super handy little friend to have. 
It's quick to recharge and I'm so impressed with how long it lasts, even when running something really big like a saw or a weed eater, which I imagine takes a lot of power. I love that you can recharge it with the solar panels and that it can be used as a backup plan when the power goes out because winter's coming and with that come storms and with storms come power outages. So be sure to check out EcoFlow's new River 2. I will put a link to their website in my description. And thanks again EcoFlow for sponsoring this video and for this awesome power station. A big pile of something or another. I'm not getting into that, but it really doesn't need to be perfect. I just want it to be better. This side isn't nearly so bad. And it's certainly not perfect over here, but it's a lot better than it was, and I won't have that nasty grass sticking up through the snow. And if you look at my thing, I apologize for the wind noise, my microphones are charging. So after all of that that I just did, the percentage of this battery is 84%. So I only use 16% of what this battery can hold from all of that weed eating that I just did. I think that is pretty impressive. So I think that's all I'm gonna do for weed eating today. I'm happy with at least that. I did wanna tell you guys about one more thing. Um, I know that I mentioned in the past that I have a trip coming up. I'm going to Ethiopia with a group called Partners with Ethiopia. Super excited about it. Um, and I'll be telling you more about that as the time comes. But for now, I wanted to let you guys know that we're going to several different schools and nonprofits in Ethiopia. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to do when we get there is give books to the kids. A lot of the kids, you know, they have books at school and stuff, but to have a book, books of their own that they get to keep and take home is a really, really exciting and special thing. So our goal is to give three books to each of the kids that we're going to meet in Ethiopia, which I think would be really, really awesome. But in order to do that, we need to raise money to give these books. Um, the books are $3 each, but I just wanted to let you guys know that. And if you want to be a part of my trip and donate a book to a kid um, in Ethiopia, I will put a link in the description below. Like I said, they're $3 each. So it's a really awesome opportunity to you know, help someone out and literacy is so important. So if you're interested, check that out. So I just stopped here at the house at my lunch break and I was very excited to see that Seth and Jay are here working on the Bay Window Foundation and they've made some progress on the blocks. Look at that. They're jacking up the window some. So the other day when I said level-ish, mm -hmm. that's because we have having a little bit of trouble getting it pushed up to where it needs to be exactly. 
Because it's going to fall apart? No, my... <laughs> well, probably not. Shouldn't. My guess, my thought is maybe it wasn't... When it was put together originally, it wasn't put together perfectly level. And so we're kind of pushing against the framing at this point yeah. to try like to try to get it where it should have been. Right. <laughs> so I think we're gonna get it as close as we can and, and call it good. I'm good with that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, can't go through my body. Can definitely hear some creaks. I think. I mean, I think that'll be probably as far as close as So the idea is the top is maybe a half inch high right now. So I'll finish off this half up to the bottom, or up to what level will be. And then hopefully if we can take the jack out, this the this will sit on the wall on this side level. And we can finish up this side. We might have to piece it together with the jack still, but Right. That's that's the hope. We can get it up, do the wall level, and then set it back down on the wall, basically. Right. Cool. It looks like a lot of work with all the cutting. Yeah, it's a lot easier with two people. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. What are you using to cut the blocks? So that oh. saw here has a special blade on it. Oh, gotcha. Nice. Well, it's very exciting. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> well, I probably should go. I'll check back after work and see Hopefully how things are going. A couple more blocks will be in by then, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Every little bit is progress. Yeah, for sure. At least it's a nice day. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's just a nice day. Yeah, it's supposed to be like 70 again. Really? Yeah, crazy, crazy. Okay, popping in after work. I just had a chat with Jay. Look at that. They made some major progress today. I didn't think that they were going to get that much done. Looks amazing. See, it's all the way up to the top on this side. Doesn't that look beautiful? And just one more block needed here. And then this side is still to be continued. Yeah, so this is where we're at so far. I will keep you updated as the progress continues here. Okay, so it is a new day, and um, to close this video, I wanted to give you the promised walk in the woods in the fall. I know I haven't showed you the um, stone walls in a long time, 
slash since the very first video. So I thought this might be a good time to check them out and see how they look. The house may look a little rough, but the trees, the trees are incredible. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tune in next time to see the progress at this crazy fixer-upper house of mine. Bye!